169 say it means we got shots fired at 415 AS. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am Sheriff Lombardo for Clark County. Um, I don't have uh, very much more to update you with uh, from our previous briefings. Um, the one thing in particular that has changed um, in the negative is our uh, body count. I, you know what, that's the wrong way to say it. The number of people that have died associated with this event has increased. Uh, right now we're using the number of 58. Um, I just was informed that it may be 59 of an individual that may have expired at Sunrise Hospital. So um, in normal fashion, I do not want to give you bad information. Uh, so please do not press me on that number until we get further into this investigation. The number of injured, uh, we are using the number of 515. Um, and as you can tell, as the hours go by, that number continues to increase. Um, we have not received any additional intelligence associated with the suspect. Um, we, are, we have completed the search warrant in Mesquite. Um, I am not aware of any derogatory information that we can utilize to furtherance of this investigation at this point, um, but we have just recovered items and it will take a little while to evaluate that information. Uh, we have learned information of additional property in northern Nevada and the FBI has responded to the location and will be serving a search warrant here shortly. Uh, we have completed the investigation at the room. Uh, we have collected uh, all the items associated with the suspect and we are in the recovery phase of that. The Mandalay Bay itself has um, uh, gone back to service uh, minus the 32nd floor uh, and they would like everybody advise um, that if they are uh, separated from their hotel room, they have the ability to return to the hotel. Now the um, location in question, the concert hall, uh, we will be in a long process of body recovery out there and evidence recovery and evidence documentation. So uh, you're going to have to ask the public's patience um, and as we bring information forward. Uh, it's a uh, long, laborious process to identify the victims and reunite them uh, with the family members to advise them of their situation. So um, we still have the families responding to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department headquarters in order to conduct a reunification of their family or friends. Um, eventually, um, in the next few hours, actually, um, I don't want to give you a, a skewed timeline, but approximately 1 p.m., we will request the family members to respond to the convention area, uh, convention center area to utilize a larger space, and we could bring in the um, victim advocates um, to assist with the family members in the long term. Uh, right now it's just a temporary phase associated with uh, the reunification. Additionally, um, we're asking to solely utilize uh, United Blood Service for blood donation and UMC um, as the only places to donate blood. We had some resource issues associated with the laborers uh, medical clinic. I applaud their effort to help us in that effort, but we have some resource issues associated with that. Uh, so better utilize LVMPD.com uh, to ensure that you know where those United Blood Service locations are uh, so we can get the needed uh, life-saving blood uh, for the victims associated with this. Um, at this point, I, as you can tell, I have several individuals um, to my rear that would like to make comment. Um, reference the ISIS statement, I want to bring that up now. Uh, so I give the opportunity to Special Agent Rouse to respond to that from the FBI, um, and he will explain what we know now, reference the ISIS claim in this uh, individual. Thank you. Good morning. As this event unfolds, we have determined to this point no connection with an international terrorist group. As this investigation continues, we will continue to work with our partners to ensure that this is factually, thoroughly, and absolutely investigated to be able to bring comfort and peace back to this community. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ruben Kiwen. I'm the congressman for the 4th Congressional District here in Nevada. I just want to say thank you to law enforcement and to all the first responders uh, who are now uh, fighting tirelessly to protect and save lives. 
I had the opportunity to stop by Sunrise Hospital earlier this morning. I uh, saw firsthand a lot of the victims, a lot of the family members, uh, but I also saw a lot of nurses and doctors that were working tirelessly to save lives. And today is a very sad day for Nevada. It's a very sad day for Las Vegas. Uh, but if anything good came out of this is that I saw humanity. I saw our community come together. I saw strangers helping strangers and saving lives. And so I do want to say thank you to the sheriff and to Metro Police, uh, to firefighters, the doctors, the nurses, and everybody who is working tirelessly to save lives uh, at this precise moment. Uh, I know we're going to get through this, and our city will be stronger. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I'm Clark County District Attorney Steve Wolfson, and on behalf of the Clark County DA's office, uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody associated with this event. Uh, two of my prosecutors, two of my young female prosecutors were actually at this concert close to the stage. And I've spoken to both of them this morning and they're pretty rattled, they're pretty shaken up. Uh, this was a horrific event to say the least. Uh, this is a classic uh, WMD, this is a, uh, a weapon and a man of mass destruction. Uh, what I'm pleased uh, so much about is how uh, this uh, doesn't involve politics in the sense of Republican or Democrat. Uh, we are here, all of us are Nevadans, and I'm very proud to be present with the other leaders here because we're working together to get through this. I want to thank Sheriff Lombardo for your leadership in leading us through this terrible, terrible day. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner? Thank you, Sheriff. I want to first off begin by thanking the Sheriff. He, uh, I got down here eight or nine hours ago and there weren't many of us here eight or nine hours ago. There was just a handful uh, immediately after this incident. But I can tell you that our first responders, both the fire uh, men and women of the fire department and Metro were on their way in when uh, this all happened. We've got first responders that are literally covered in blood as a result of this. There's a lot of victims have not been identified as of this point, but they have stepped up. Uh, it was a sole shooter. There is uh, no further threat that we're aware of, no immediate threat. I want to assure everyone that's listening that here's our words that Las Vegas is safe. The men and women at Mandalay Bay and MGM Resorts have been incredible in terms of communicating and working with the sheriff's office in order to assure us that everybody can you know, be taken care of, get back into the rooms, and that they all understand that we are safe and we are doing everything humanly possible to protect all our as tourists and our citizens in Clark County. That being said, the sheriff and I have set up a GoFundMe account that some of you might have seen. Uh, we have been inundated with phone calls and emails and text messages of people asking what the, they can do. Uh, there's going to be a lot of family members that are going through an awful lot at this particular time. As the sheriff said, we have over 500 in our hospitals being treated and we need to provide them with some sort of support. So we have done that and I just can't say enough about the uh, fine men and women uh, that are our first responders here. And, in Clark County and all of the cities and jurisdictions have pulled together. And I thank them all for that. We've pledged the full resources of Clark County to assist the sheriff and the FBI in any way humanly possible. It will be at a service and we uh, ask for your prayers. God bless you. I want to thank you all. I'm Mayor Carroll and good men of this great city and absolutely mirror what uh, Commissioner Sisolak had spoken to about the great response, rapid thorough, of our first responders and law enforcement. I spent part of last night and was late this morning with you all because I was over at um, UMC in the trauma unit. and. Uh, it's been a very, very difficult time for us. And as we look forward to continuing what our great city does, um, we offer a, a safe place. This is a crazed lunatic full of hate. We don't know much about his background, but it certainly is not an extension of what we believe in, what everybody who lives here and works here and those who visit here want to see. This is something that was simply outrageous, uncalled for, and so many innocent people, young people, children, um, parents who've lost loved ones, and so many still suffering in the hospitals, gone through major surgery. We have some that were hit quite lightly with shrapnel as they were near the exits. Um, it's been a hugely traumatic 
time for all of us and for our visitors who love country music, many of whom have come from the northern part of our states here and just really um, came here for a wonderful, safe time. We pride ourselves in our law enforcement. They are unequal. They are so rapid to respond, so thorough in what they do, and our, our first responders have been simply phenomenal. It is a city and a community that has pulled together. Everybody is working so hard to make sure that we are taking care of the needs of the families and those who've lost loved ones. And it's just been a very, very traumatic time for everybody. The president gave a beautiful message, and he will be visiting us either sometime later today, tomorrow, or Wednesday. Great concern, and we just know that the entire community, I have so many mayors that have called, governors who have called me personally to express their support, help, and what we ask for is blood. That's the main thing right now, is that if our people want to do something and they are healthy, then please donate blood. We'll have plenty of banks available. Always call a hospital if you're unsure where to go. So thank you very much. And Madam Congresswoman, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step in front of you. Before me, Mayor, it's a pleasure to follow you. Well, thank you very much. I'm Dina Titus. I represent Nevada's District 1. It includes the fabulous Las Vegas Strip, including the Mandalay Bay, where this horrendous act took place. You know, so many times I welcome people to Las Vegas and all the excitement and entertainment and fun it has to offer. Never thought I'd be standing here trying to offer solace and my office assistance to victims of something like this that would happen. All through the night we were briefed by law enforcement. I thank you Sheriff and your team for all that you did and the first responders. Mainly we were trying to stay out of the way because you don't want to turn a personal tragedy into a political event. Today my office will be giving blood as the mayor said. They appreciate your thoughts and prayers but what they need is blood. Uh, we'll be open to do anything we can to assist. But you you know, I've just been hearing all these stories of heroism that occurred in the midst of this tragedy. You had off-duty police officers who were there just for the concert, for an evening of fun, who were able to help people get shelter and who were able to identify the location of the shooter. And just random strangers, a friend of some of my staff members who lives in the district, said they were running, being trampled. Somebody just opened a van door and pulled them inside for shelter and safety. That's the kind of people we have here in Las Vegas who are willing to reach out and help one another. And so I thank all of our law enforcement. I thank the first responders, those in the hospitals where people are just in the halls, in the parking lot, trying to take care of so many. And please call on our office if there is any way we can be of assistance. I'm Adam Laxalt, Nevada's Attorney General, and um, I want to echo what a lot of people have said today. I've been here since about 2 in the morning, and the job that Metro and our law enforcement and first responders have done is just absolutely remarkable. We've never been hit with such a tough situation in this city, and to see the poise and the uh, pressure that they're able to perform under was, was truly astounding. Uh, I, I believe that they're always going to be able to get us out of these situations. Our law enforcement will be able to step up to the plate when we need them most. And of course, the city and our state will bounce back. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I just want to add one more thing before we have the governor come up. Uh, I got to ask you to do something else. When you see one of these men or women wearing a badge or members of our fire department, tell them thank you. Their selfless actions saved the lives of hundreds of people. Not a dozen people, hundreds of people. This death count would have been many hundred more were it not for the brave work of every single one of these men and women that you see wearing a badge, members of our fire department, our first responders, our police department. So please, I encourage all of you watching, next time you see one, just say thank you. Appreciate that. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Governor Brian Sandoval. You know, I don't know if I have words to describe 
what we're going through and what these poor unfortunate victims are going through. We're angry, we're grieving, we're confused, people are hurting. Yeah, I want to thank the sheriff and all the first responders. You know, I just had an opportunity to visit some of the patients in the hospital. And, and it's unimaginable what people are going through right now. You know, you got family members who are here and don't have anyone to reach out to. But the re first responders and what they've done, it's their finest hour. Their finest hour. And the way that the sheriff and the Metropolitan Police Department have handled this event is unprecedented. The paramedics who came on the scene in basically what was a war zone and treated all those men, women, and kids. The healthcare professionals at the hospitals, the doctors who came from all over the valley to, to do whatever they could. And now, you know, we don't understand what's happened, and I'm sure we'll find out a little more from when Metro continues to do its investigation. I do know for everybody watching, and you know, I want to thank the President of the United States, the other governors that have reached out to me to offer their help and assistance. We need blood, so if anybody can contribute blood, anybody in the Las Vegas area or locally who can do that. But as we move on, we'll learn more. We're going to need this help. Now, this is obviously an unprecedented event in our nation's history, and we're going to have to learn from this, and we're going to have to fight through this. We have to stop and pray for the families and for the victims. We have to rely on our faith in a time like this to get us through all of it. You know, I'm I couldn't be prouder of the way that Nevadans have responded to this and, and what they've done. Doctors and nurses and everyone else who's worked through the night to save lives. And they've told me they've saved lives that, that if not for their organization and their professionalism and their training. So again, Sheriff, thank you for the courage that you've shown to the people that were at the concert. You, you see courage and compassion there. People helping total strangers, risking their own lives to, to help people. That really speaks highly to the character of America. So again, uh, there's a lot to learn from all this. It was a cowardly, despicable act that I'm very angry about. There's not much we can do, but we can learn. So ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for everybody's care and concern. I said, you know, I'm really proud to be with everybody who's here, the mayor, the congressman, the attorney general, the sheriff, the congressman, our law enforcement. This is the Nevada family at its best. So God bless all of you. And God bless, most importantly, the families, the victims, the mothers, the fathers, the sons, the daughters, the aunts, the uncles, cousins, nephews, nieces, friends, and neighbors. And for everybody who's watching, please stop for a moment and pause and say a prayer for them. Thank you. Sheriff Lombardo. Hold on a second. I'll take questions here just shortly. Um, as you can see, uh, we had the opportunity to have some of the Nevada's delegation here today, and some are missing. Uh, but I don't want them slighted because they all reached out to me, Senator Heller, Senator Masto and uh, Congresswoman Rosen. Uh, they all reached out to me uh, throughout this uh, tragedy and offered their assistance. So I don't want them slighted just because they're not standing behind me. Additionally, I, I have a chief of police uh, next to me, and that's Chief uh, Troy Tanner of the Mesquite PD. He has been instrumental in the assistance of his folks towards us to help us complete this investigation. So I think it's appropriate that he gets recognized for their effort. And then uh, Greg Castle, he's just very humble. He's obviously the Clark County Fire Chief, and he likes to stand in the back. But um, where we are different in our jurisdiction, as through my travels in comparison to other jurisdictions, we work very well with the fire department. And they did not hesitate to pair up with an officer 
and enter the fray. So I want to thank him for that. Thank you, Greg. So I'm happy to answer some questions. Um, as you know, the investigation is continuing. Uh, so please do not get uh, too detailed on your questions because I probably will not be able to answer it at this time. Sheriff Lombardo. Uh, yes, sir. You know, the search of the resident has included the pool there in the way of computer information or anything which gives anything towards voting or what this man might have. And you mentioned a second location in northern Nevada. No, the, the second location is just based off uh, assessor's records of ownership. Uh, we discovered that he owned another piece of property in northern Nevada. As far as the um, electronic evaluation, we haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. Um, the only thing we are immediately aware in our position is additional firearms and ammunition. Uh, people were hit with shrapnel at the exit. That's what Mayor Goodman said. I want, to, want you to follow up on that. And also, how did he get these weapons into the hotel room? Um, well, we're, like I said, we're doing the investigation. Uh, I don't want to give you any inaccurate information, uh, but we do know that he uh, brought the weapons in on his own. Uh, in an original uh, briefing, we believe that he was in um, partnership or companionship of a female, and we have determined the female is out of the country. Uh, so he brought these weapons in on his own. Um, as far as method, I don't have the ability to give you an accurate picture. Was the shooter known to local law enforcement here in Clark County or Las Vegas? Any prior charge or anything like that? No, not at all. Uh, we've checked all the federal databases and local databases and state databases, and we had no knowledge of this individual. Sheriff, are we going to change the designation on the woman who was involved with this man from a person of interest to a possible accomplice or suspect? Uh, no, it's still a, a, we still consider her a person of interest. Um, we have um, been in contact with her, and we plan to engage her upon her return to the country. Do you have any idea how he was able to uh, break through the windows? Was he able to open the windows, or did he smash the windows? Have you pieced that together? Uh, we believe he had a device similar to a hammer to smash the windows. Uh, Sheriff, um, so far I've heard a description of the suspect as a lone wolf. Um, is the investigation look, looking into any potential ties, even loose ties to extremist groups? Well, obviously we will do that. Um, we will um, run it down to the very end. Uh, but right now, at face value, we haven't been able to identify that. Sure, you said he checked in on Thursday, the 28th, to the hotel. I believe that's accurate. Did he have tickets to the concert? I have no idea. So. Do you know what he has done? between checking in and, and no, we're night? we're following up on that there there will be hours and hours and hours of video surveillance that we will have to recall with the cooperation of the MGM. Sure, just to say, uh, pride safety, uh, we've seen um, your center upstairs with the police um, you know, the fusion center. center. Correct. Um, there are cameras everywhere, practically every inch of the city is covering a camera. Outdoors, indoors. How could this happen? Well I don't understand um, what you're alluding to. Um, how could it happen? This is an individual who was described as a lone wolf. I don't know how it could have been prevented if we didn't have any prior knowledge to this individual. Um, it wasn't evident that he had weapons in his room. Um, we have determined that there has been um, employees uh, going to and fro from his room, and nothing nefarious was noticed uh, at this point. That's what we know now. So. Sure. First responders were integral to stopping more deaths. Can you describe how multi-agency effort and strike teams were able to find the suspect? Um, well, yeah, you're absolutely correct. So any special event that takes place in the southern Nevada region, um, it's required by NRS to supply police officers uh, to ensure security. Um, the Mandalay Bay did a, a great job of hiring police officers. They had sufficient staffing uh, for, the sta for the concert. Um, and when this individual uh, decided to fire upon the crowd, which was approximately 22,000 individuals, um, it's very difficult to manage that size crowd, and you have to ensure you have the proper staffing. Uh, and as described, um, our officers responded immediately in conjunction with the fire department as soon as the fire department arrived. Uh, but they were able to identify where the weapon was being discharged from in, in a proximity. Uh, it's hard to tell what floor it is from the outside. But once they gain entry into the hotel uh, in conjunction with security and through phone calls from patrons, they were able to uh, call it down to a possible floor. Uh, once they made uh, 
entry onto the hallway, they could uh, they immediately knew what room was in question. Sure, there's some dramatic reports about what exactly happened in the room when SWAT officers entered. That maybe there was so much smoke from the shells that the, the smoke alarms were going off. Is there any truth to any of that? I don't know. I haven't been told about any smoke alarms, but I know that his um, he had uh, killed himself, uh, and exactly um, we'll have to go through the our. our um, body worn camera and existing video uh, whether we uh, engaged him at the same approximate time or not. Sure, you said you didn't believe that this was connected to ISIS. Do you have any idea of what kind of motives you could be looking at? At this point? No, ma'am. I can't get into the mind of a psychopath at this point. Sheriff, on the investigation that's going on right now between uh, at the site of the shooting, how extensive is it and what are we talking about as far as Las Vegas Boulevard being shut down while the ballistics and the criminals? Do their well, I believe um, we've got most of Las Vegas Boulevard open, um, directly adjacent to the Mandalay. Um, it still remains closed. We'll ensure that we go out to the, the proper intersections to, uh, to limit the hindrance of traffic. Uh, but we're looking at a minimum of 12 additional hours uh, for documentation and do of the crime scene and the removal of the bodies. Do you know about how long he was able to shoot for, and do you happen to know if there was ever any return fire from officers on the ground in any way? No, I don't, I'm not aware of any return fire, nor am I aware of the timeline, uh, but we did have uh, SWAT officers discharge weapons um, at the room location. Is the idea of checking the weapons right now to determine if indeed any of them were legal or illegally converted? Yes, the, the federal or the FBI and the ATF is uh, helping us with that aspect. Injured or deceased come from the hotel? Were they all in the concert or were any in the, in the hotel area? Um, I'm not sure because we had people that were uh, deceased and injured outside the vicinity of the concert area, uh, so it would be hard to determine or make that determination at this point. We are obviously going to have to talk to all those injur injured individuals to make that assessment. How many people who were injured were shot and how many were injured running away? I, I don't know, ma'am. Um, the people have been displaced in five separate hospitals, so it's going to require an extensive uh, review of that communication with them uh, to determine that. So thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's time, and I appreciate everybody here to the back of me and their support of our police department. And um, we will keep you regularly updated. I can't give you an exact timeline at this point, uh, but we will keep you informed as we receive information. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you